Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to my video game review series. You guys that have been following my channel will know that I recently reviewed LEGO Harry Potter Years 1-4 to from 2010. And today I'm going to be reviewing the sequel, LEGO Harry Potter Years 5-7, to released in 2011. So, of course with the 8th and final Harry Potter movie being released that same year, and with the movie license game sadly being a massive disappointment and just not really living up to the hype, these LEGO games had a great opportunity to capitalise on the success of the movie, and they certainly did. The movie, of course, uh, was a smash hit, it went on to break box office records, and I believe was one of the biggest uh, box office successes of all time. And um, yeah, the first LEGO Harry Potter game, the one that came out the year before this, if you saw my review then you will know that I really liked that game and I really rate it highly, gave it a very high score. Was the sequel better or was it basically more of the same? Well let's talk about it. So right off the bat there were several improvements made in the sequel, uh, one of the most notable improvements that they made was the improvements to combat, most notably in regards to the dueling. Uh, this game has more of a refined and sophisticated dueling system than the first game, though still easy, provides a little bit more strategy and a little bit more of a challenge and was just a bit more fun than the more basic duels and basic combat of the first game. Basically how it works is you and another NPC will pit themselves into a battle ring and you will need to match the colour of the spell that the enemy is using. Uh, that will sort of lock you into a quick time event a short event where you basically spam the button to direct the spell back at your enemies. Um, you can also make a shield to defend your enemy's spells before you counter with your own spells. And it's a fun dueling system, it's quite refined. And um, it was also implemented into some of the game's boss battles. And boss battles which again are a little bit better than they were in the first game. They're a little bit more cinematic and a little bit more interactive here than the boss battles in the first game were. Uh, and they provide slightly more of a challenge. They are still easy, but like I said, it's just a little bit more strategic and there's a little bit more of a challenge. Very good boss battles. I really enjoyed them. Uh, you have several villains from the series that act as boss battles here. Villains such as Malfoy, Nagini, Bellatrix, Voldemort, Snape. Yeah, I know, he's really a good guy. Uh, the Locket, Horcrux, Fenir Greyback, Nicholas Sturgeon, I mean Dolores Umbridge, and so many others. Uh, the graphics and presentation also has a slight improvement this time, despite the game only being released around about a year later. It does actually look quite a bit better. The cutscenes, the character models, and the backgrounds and textures look really nice. Uh, once again, just like the first game, you have several locations from the Harry Potter movies recreated excellently in Lego form. So the game looks great and it has some improvements over the first game. Once again, there are plenty of playable characters to unlock. Uh, characters from the first game as well as some new ones who were featured in the 5th to 8th movies, which of course this game is based on. Uh, a huge roster of playable characters that you can find and unlock throughout the game and uh, buy them in Madame Malkin's store. Although they forgot about Ernie McMillan this time, those assholes, but I digress. Uh, this of course adds an incentive to replay the game and find all the collectibles, not just characters but also gold bricks which you can accumulate to unlock bonus missions and stuff. Um, also red bricks just like the first game that basically give you upgrades and special abilities such as regenerating hearts or multiplying your money collected and stuff like that. You know that adds more of an incentive to collect them all because it makes the game easier. And yeah so many different abilities you can unlock which again gives you some of an incentive to just find all the collectibles. It makes the game a bit easier. Uh, you can unlock like indicators to help you find some of the other collectibles and unlock all the characters and stuff like that. And so some of them are actually quite well hidden and require characters with certain abilities such as dark magic or the ability to dig in order to find them and unlock them. Uh, the level design here is pretty good, I'd say pretty much on par with the first game, just like in the first game. You play through the levels on story mode and once you complete them, you can replay the levels anytime you want on free play. This way you can actually take any character that you've unlocked and take them through the level. Uh, there will be certain areas and, and collectibles that have been locked off to you until you are able to obtain a character who has a certain ability to unlock those collectibles and access certain new areas. This of course again adds to the replay value and again it makes the game just so much more immersive and so much more fun 
and so much more varied. Other than that, there basically isn't much I can really say about this game that I didn't already cover in my review for the first game. The gameplay has been improved a little bit, and the boss battles are slightly better, but other than that, the games are pretty much the same. I, I suppose another thing they kind of improved is the game's comedy. Uh, the cutscenes and physical storytelling this time is really funny, even funnier than the first game. Uh, for example, uh, they provided a much better motivation for Voldemort to murder Snape. It had nothing to do whatsoever with the Elder Wand or anything like that. It was all in fact because Snape ate the last biscuit. Not gonna lie, I prefer that motivation to the motivation in the movies. Um, also, the game confirmed several apprehensions that I had about uh, certain characters. For example, Ginny Weasley always creeped me out for some reason. Uh, this was made so much worse when I read about a somewhat popular fan theory that Ginny may have actually drugged Harry with Love Potion, and that was why he fell in love with her in the first place after eating her pie. Uh, man, that is dark. But in this game, there's actually a section of this game which really creeped me out where you have to recruit several members for the DA, Dumbledore's army. You have to give each of them something in exchange for joining, and Ginny wants a Voldemort action figure. I mean, what? <laughs> so yeah, Ginny's a weirdo. Oh, and by the way, Xenophilius Lovegood is a creep. I mean, that guy, he makes Ginny meet, seem normal by comparison. That guy is probably the most disturbing character in Harry Potter. But again, I digress. <laughs> I mean, the, the game is a whole lot of fun, and I would definitely recommend it, particularly if you happen to be a fan of the Harry Potter series. Uh, as far as how it compares to the first game, like I said, there are some improvements, like the improvements to combat and the boss battles and whatnot, but I do have to take into consideration that the first game did come out over a year before, so they did have to up their game a bit in order to justify people buying this one and, and paying full price for it and whatnot. I think this game is really good, and, and, and like I said before, you know, if you're a fan of the Harry Potter series, you will enjoy it. Just like the first game, I give it a solid 8 out of 10, and would argue that you know the game is, is worth the asking price, I mean, at least nowadays, and, and I wouldn't argue if you were to give it, say, a 9, because again, the game is really, really fun. It's just that by comparison to some of the other LEGO games, I don't think that it's one of the best ones. I'd say that I still like LEGO Marvel Super Heroes a bit more, for example. So, um, yeah, the, the LEGO games, they're always consistently fun, and as I pointed out in my review for the previous game, I actually have reviewed several of the LEGO games in the past, and I'll leave a link in the description section once again, so you can check those out if you want to. You can check out my LEGO review playlist, as well as my other game reviews. I have several playlists on the channel, and I'd appreciate it if you check them out. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Subscribe if you want to. I have lots of game reviews coming in the near future. Lots of games to talk about. Mostly retrospective game reviews. That's what I tend to do on here. Thanks for watching and God bless. <sighs>